God Alone, The Life and Letters of a Saint by Shri Jnana Mata. Chapter 4 is being continued. In the following two letters, Jnana Mata responds to two, two students who had written to SRF asking for counsel with certain problems. She gives explicit guidance on the proper attitude one should have towards depression and melancholy, mental suffering and how to deal with evil spirits. November 7, 1935 Dear Mr. I do truly sympathize with the mental suffering you described and had in my own childhood an experience of torture. So you see, we are fellow sufferers. It is a mistake, however, to pity ourselves on account of this suffering because it is through suffering that we learn and grow. I shall always remember the words of someone to when to me when I was undergoing the greatest suffering of my life. He was not a friend but a complete stranger who had the impulse to speak to me one day when I was out for a walk. He said it had to be. It was all necessary for you. And I answered, yes, I know that what you say is true. I needed it. His reply came quickly and like a blow from the shoulder. Then glorify it. That is the point. Since it is suffering that teaches us the truth and turns us towards God, why do you not thank and praise it for the work it does for us? You speak of your tendency towards melancholy and despondency as being hereditary. This is a mistake. Since you are a student of Hindu philosophy, you must be acquainted with the law of karma. We do not suffer for the wrongdoing of others, only for our own. You brought this tendency to be melancholy over from a past life and the reason for it lies in that forgotten life not in something which you have inherited from your ancestors. The memory of this talk over your grandfather's tragic death may strengthen your tendency towards melancholy but it would not cause it. No doubt you have fought against it and you should continue to fight with ever increasing strength and vision to the vision to the end. Whenever we see that some habit mental or physical is dragging us down as you see this tendency to despond does, at that very instant we ought to begin the fight against it. It is a very great mistake to say or to think that we are bound by the act of another. We ourselves through endless incarnations have built the character we now possess. Since we ourselves did it, we can and must undo our work and build better, more noble mansions for our souls. Never read nor listen to accounts of suicides, murders or anything similar. Such things do happen on this planet, but they do not furnish suitable food for our souls. When that huge clammy hand from the mire reaches you, reaches for you out of the darkness, first firmly deny its power over you. Even Jesus had to say, Get thee behind me, Satan, and then turn wide open towards God in whatever way is easiest for you. Try to feel his presence in the beauties of nature or in the companionship of some helpful friend or inspiring book or do anything else that uplifts you. Do not forget that I have had to do all these things myself, so I know. And most important of all, meditate as much as possible. Meditation is the method by which we fry the seeds of a karma so that they cannot germinate and bear fruit in some future life. You say that... God has been very kind to you. Your letters show me that you do not fully realize how kind he has been. Melancholy is said to be the greatest bar there is to the realization of God. Yet, it, in spite of it, you have had the bliss experience eight or six times. God manifests as bliss. So, he came personally to you to help you in your suffering. Keep those experiences in your mind as much as possible, shutting out all sad thoughts. You say that at times you feel as if the connection between yourself and God has been severed. This is impossible. Man cannot cut asunder this connection because in him we live, move and have our being. The aim and goal of all spiritual work, discipline, study and meditation is to become conscious of this fact, to contact this abiding presence within us. That is the only difference between the saint and the sinner. 
वन इज कॉन्शियस ऑफ हिज लीनियज द अदर इज नॉट फॉर्चुनेट पीपल लाइक योर सेल्फ दोज हुज कर्मा इज सफिशेंटली गुड फील द टच ऑफ हिज हैंड अपॉन देयर सोल्स द अदर्स विल वेन द टाइम इज राइप वेरी सिंसियरली यूअर्स ज्ञान माता डियर मिसेस हाउ डिड यू कॉन्टैक्ट द ईविल एंटिटीज दैट आर टॉर्मेंटिंग यू वज द लेडी होम यू सर्वड एज सेक्रेटरी ए स्पिरिचुअलिस्ट और आर यू डिड शी होल्ड सियांसेस एंड डू यू अटेंड दैम इफ सो द फर्स्ट थिंग फॉर यू टू डू इज डिसकंटिन्यू द प्रैक्टिस नेक्स्ट कीप योर सेल्फ इन ए पॉजिटिव स्टेट ऑफ माइंड दे गेंड अक्रॉस टू यूअर माइंड एंड कॉन्शियसनेस बाई रीजन ऑफ योर नेगेटिव एटीट्यूड दे डो नॉट अटैक्ट वन हु इज पॉजिटिव सिंस इट इज यू हु ओपन द डोर टू दैम इट मस्ट बी यू हु पुट्स दैम आउट प्लान योर फीट फर्मली एंड से गेट आउट एंड स्टे आउट keep yourself in a positive state of mind constantly and fill your mind with thoughts of god act as you do when you want to make a dark room light you do not fight with the darkness you simply bring in the light and the darkness is dispelled read spiritual books constantly the bible the lives of holy people anything that is inspiring and that appeals to you in this way you will surround yourself with light evil spirits are in the darkness they cannot penetrate the light but if you become negative and your aura becomes dark they come nearer and nearer to you and at last they gain admittance next and this is very important sing or chant loudly softly or mentally the word om it is pronounced om surround yourself with the atmosphere of om by keeping it in your mind and on your tongue constantly the method is to draw the letters of the word out thus Om, Om, Om. When you go to bed at night, write with your finger the word Om on your pillow. Jnana Mata. In the following three letters, Jnana Mata discusses the right attitude that one should have towards one's body, its food, its health, its age. The first of these is a report to Paramahamsa Ji of interviews she had with two of the many students. who sought her advice and counsel during her years at the enchinitas hermitage she faithfully informed her guru of the salient points of these interviews to be certain that he approved of the counsel she was giving paramahamsa ji would not eat the pancakes served at breakfast he also said that one morning there was no milk and no toast the toaster being broken i told him that one's attitude towards one's food is more important than the diet itself that while i would like to have a perfectly balanced diet if i could only have one the diet or the attitude i would take the attitude i told him that he would have to concede something and ad- advised him to eat a flipjack or two that as he was working out of the doors they would not hurt him especially if he had the right attitude I told him to pray silently before eating. O oh Lord, this is the food Thou hast given me. Therefore, it must be the best for me. I also told him how, when he had careless cooks at Mr. Washington, I had eaten burnt rice, apple sauce, and bread and butter for my support, and counted it all joy because I was near you. He seemed to feel better for the time being and thanked me. Mr X says he likes to work for you because you are a perfectionist you notice every little thing that is not right and point it out to him and he is glad to make it right he says that if something is not perfect you are not fully satisfied and that he feels the same way about his work he only hopes that what he has done will stand the test of time gyan mata thursday morning divine and blessed master i well knew that what you wish me to manifest is complete surrender to god a surrender that gives no place for concern for the body how lovely how heavenly this idea is i have no words to express but i think you do not really mean me to give up care for the body because if i do this it will be of no use to you on one occasion when i was able to completely ignore the demands of this body I carelessly exposed myself to a cold. You told me that such an act was not a spiritual act, because I, if I became ill as a result, I would not only bring needless suffering upon myself, but would also 
and cumber others who would have who would then have to care for me and imprudent action is not a spiritual action you said so i feel that all the proper care i care take of this prop poor and useless body unless except to the degree it is useful to you and this work it is a truly spiritual action with deep devotion gyanamata to be continued